So uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what is <clears throat> what's in the connectivity atlas. So it's a long-range neuronal con uh, connectivity projection data set, and it was uh, targets were either stereotactically or functionally defined, and then uh, they were injected with AAD virus, and the virus uh, caused the cells to express a green fluorescent protein. After three weeks, the, the, our high throughput pipeline sliced the brain up. You can see both the red, the autofluorescence from which we created the common coordinate framework, as well as the green signal in the green fluorescence. And then our, our informatics data processing pipeline allowed us to put that into the three-dimensional space. So the different components of the connectivity atlas. So we first we looked in wild-type mouse. So our wild-type mouse is the C57 black mouse. We uh, used just a regular AAV virus, so every cell that was infected with the virus started expressing the green fluorescent protein. Um, and then this basically looked at all the different cell populations and where they projected to. And then the second phase of this project used the Cree lines. So in this case, while every cell was infected, every cell was infected with AAV, only the cells that were Cree expressing would, would, uh, would be, become green. So you can actually look at, you can divide the different populations um, inside the, the wild type mouse just to see uh, you know, what different kinds of, unfortunately Cree lines aren't cell types, but at least you can uh, start to subdivide a little bit more the, um, the projections from certain populations of cells. We also have a retinal projectome on this project, so we, we uh, injected the virus into the eye of the, of the mice, and then we looked to see where the ganglion cells were uh, projecting to in the brain. And then we started to functionally target areas. So we've been concentrating in the visual, in the visual cortex. And structurally, this is, uh, this is an example of the, of the visual cortex here, uh, actually. Patrick, can I get, yeah, so, uh, so the, you can tell me this is, this is the area of the visual cortex and structurally you can't really see, uh, you can't really see any, uh, any of the delineations, but functionally there are uh, many different regions and we're actually interested in some of the secondary functional areas as well. And so the only way to look at those areas is to um, is to create a sign map, and so this is this is how they how they look at this. Is they uh, the anesthetized mouse is, is given a stimulus, and as the stimulus uh, passes across the screen through through the visual area, different different regions of the of the visual cortex light up, and you can they you can actually target the different regions here. The um, I don't think we we don't have anybody here talking about this, but we've got. Uh, you know, so there's, we're, we're going to start having papers, and if you're at SFM, we've got, we've got a, lot of, a lot of this data. But if you want more of this information, you can look in the documentation. But this way, you can find a functionally defined region and then target your injection for the center of that region. So that's one of the, one of the ways that we've started to target these areas. And then, um, you know, we've, we know for sure that we've got basic cave length. You know, the experiment that we did was a cytosolic uh, G, uh, GFP. So while in some cases, and it's very high resolution, you can see structures that sure look like terminal boutons, we didn't actually do that experiment. So we've started to do that experiment, doing uh, synaptophysin EGFP, which um, sp specifically is fused to synaptic terminal, terminal, so you can actually see the presynaptic terminal from the injection site. So this is the, the machine that we use. So it's a, the, we have a, a vibratome right on the microscope itself. So you're measuring the fluorescence in the block face. And then after you measure the fluorescence, the vibratome slices 100 microns off. So uh, we're already perfectly registered in the Z-plane. So we don't have to worry about any of that registration. We've actually got the fluorescence uh, in, in, the, uh, in the undamaged or undeformed brain. And it's a it's two photon because it takes 18 hours to to actually look at a single brain at the level that we, we look at it. So it's a, uh, we've got six of these machines running and they're pretty much running full time. 
you know, we've got the, the bottleneck is being able to get the, the brain on these on these machines. So let's let's go into the application so you can get a sense of this this data set. So uh, what I'd like you to do is pick a region, and this is this is different from the from the gene expression where you don't search. This one you actually just just uh, filter. And so you can you can choose a, a source structure based on based on our ontology. You can filter based by mouse line or the tracer type. Um, you can also look at the intrinsic signal imaging, and we have that for a few experiments. So what you're looking at here is all of the experiments that we've conducted. Um, our first couple phases were all done in the right hemisphere, and we've uh, started to collect data on the left hemisphere, which informatically has, you know, raised some issues. So we're still we're working on the interface so that it's uh, so so it will actually work better for you. For example, if you're looking at the reference atlas, you can't you, you can't actually see the reference atlas on the side that you're interested in it in. But this is these are like I said we like we release the data first and then typically we, we figure out the best way to present it to you. So what you're looking at is each one of these spheres is a an injection. The larger the sphere, the larger the injection. Uh, it's colored based on our reference atlas, so that's what all the colors are. So if you pick a region, how many, how many uh, injections are in your region? Okay, so that starts, you start to get a sense of, you can narrow down your experiments. Okay, now, even 142 regions is a lot for you know, if you've got a large cadre of graduate students, maybe you can have them go through each one of the experiments. But you probably want to narrow it down further. So uh, further filter your search using any of these any of these regions. You can do a, a mouse line. So one of the things that I didn't point out right away is that you can also, so these are, this is an anterior grade uh, connectivity atlas, but since it's digital, you can do a digital retrograde. It's kind of a virtual retrograde search. So using the target search, if you click on this radio button, you can input an area, say for example, the isocortex, but then you also have to have a target structure. And, and that, what that does is it, not only do you have the source in the, in the isocortex, but now you've also got to have signal that goes through another region. So you could say the striatum. And that will also narrow down your search. Right. Another way to do that is also with the spatial search. With the spatial search, you've got, again, this is the, the common coordinate framework, but you've got the, the coronal, or you can do the, the sagittal and the horizontal. And you can select any particular region. So for example, we can look here in the striatum and one of the things that you can start to see, actually, and this is kind of this is kind of cool. You can actually, if you, if if you mouse through the striatum, you can actually see which region of the cortex projects to the to that area of the striatum. You can also use this to find injection sites. So you can pick a you can pick an injection site in the pri primary motor area, and then click the Find Injection Sites button, and you can even narrow the search that, that way. So again, it's a, it's a spatial search for either uh, the injection sites or the pro projection to that, to that particular voxel. These voxels are 100 microns on a side, the resolution of the depth between, between sections. So pick a single experiment in one of the associated visual areas. And one of the things you want to look at is where does your 
the experiment project to. One of the ways to look is you can actually, these, these uh, side panels are interactive. So you can double click on one of the areas in the three-dimensional atlas and it'll bring it up in the two-dimensional atlas. So that's one of the ways you can look. If you double click on this area, it'll bring it up in the, in the lower corner. So I'm just gonna, and then oftentimes this takes a long time to load up anyway. But you can open up the high, high resolution image viewer here and, uh, and then open up the reference atlas. As soon as this loads up, I'll, I'll look and see if, and that's another way to, to take a look and see where the expression or where you project to. In fact, these buttons are very useful. How did you, playing around in the atlas, how did you uh, identify the structure, structures that you're experiment projected to? So the tool that I had you download was the, the three-dimensional expression atlas or the, the uh, three-dimensional viewer. So this is, this is what a, a connectivity experiment looks like inside of it. So you may not be able to open this up right now, if, especially if you hadn't downloaded the atlases, but this is what the experiment looks like. So each one of the, the, each one of the sections from the injection site was annotated by our anatomists. So if you zoom in and look at the injection site, you'll notice that there is a sphere in each one of the injection sites. You can actually click on that piece of data to open it up and look at, the, look at what that looks like in the, uh, in the two-dimensional view. But this is a, a computational pathway. It was, uh, it was a, a fast marching algorithm that starts in the injection site and marches out. And uh, when, it, when it hits the end of the signal, there's a, there's a cube. And if you click on the end of the signal, it'll actually show you the two-dimensional image from where that was taken. Now, the, the, the algorithm, the segmentation algorithm, is not really great at determining whether or not it's a passing fiber or if there's actually a projection there. So that's something that our, the human eye is way better at, at seeing. So in a lot of cases, you might actually have to go and look and see if that's actually the end of the signal or if it's just passing fibers. But once you are in, once you are um, in the Brain Explorer, there's a, there's a cool feature where if you click on one of those structures and bring it up in this, in this page, Control E or, if, or uh, Command E if you're on a Mac, will actually bring up the three-dimensional structure. So there's that structure. And you can see down here there's That's the orbital area right here, control E. So that allows you to look at the different structures. Does anybody have the Brain Atlas open up, the, uh, the, the Brain Explorer opened up? Okay, one of the things that you'll probably have to deal with is I've made the structures transparent. So if you go up to the Atlas drop down menu and, and quiz, you can actually make those structures transparent. So you can see the, the data inside it. But this is also a way to look and see what structures. So there's the cotoputamen. You can see the nice projection area here from this area. So the, the Brain Explorer is one of the ways for you to, and it's, this, is a, this is an extraordinary tool. You know, I highly recommend it. Okay, so you can use the, the, the Brain Explorer. Also, if you've got an experiment, notice that in, the, in this top hand corner, there's an eye. Oops. Right, there's, a, there's, a, there's an eye up there, and if you click on that page, ooh, look at that. Now, for some reason, it, there's something with the, the image service that it's not pulling down the main image. But if you look at the projection, this, this, this uh, projection page, this is a quantitative analysis of the signal. And 
what you've got is uh, metadata for this particular experiment, including the amount of uh, signal that was that was in the primary structure. Uh, you've got your three-dimensional viewer. You've got your two-dimensional viewer if the image service is working. Um, but you've also got a histogram. So this histogram is either in projection volume, which is in millimeters cubed, or it's uh, in density, which doesn't want to pull down right now. Um, but what you, can, what you can do is you can look and see the amount of signal based on your, uh, based on the, uh, the units in both the left hemisphere and in the right hemisphere. And this is actually a, a very, it's a, it's a very useful feature, um, particularly when, you, for example, when you have just a little bit of signal here, because you might, you might have the concern, is that real signal or not? And if you, if you click on this, um, you will actually load that up into this page, into the, and, and you can actually look and see, and oftentimes there you can, you can definitely see axons uh, moving to that, or uh, located in that region. So this, this is a, mostly it's a hypothesis generating machine because I've, you know, I've talked to a lot of anat anatomists who were just shocked at where some regions of the brain projected and how they got, how they got there. So there's a lot of, this data is largely unmined and you're welcome to, welcome to have at it. So the Brain Explorer, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a brilliant view for, for this. It, al it really does allow you to be able to put uh, connectivity as well as structural data, and you can even pull the gene expression data into, into this particular view. So now, what's this? Okay, so uh, for those of you who are has, is it, has there anybody who's used our connectivity atlas? Okay, it, 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 you have you, you have used it a bit. Okay, because it's a uh, one of the one of the features that we're looking to be able to add. Um, turns out that it's difficult to save your experiments. So you know if you if you look in the Cotopetamin, there's hundreds of, of experiments that are just in the Cotopetamin, and you can't remember which one it was. And but. Um, one of the things there is to do is to save, so if you've, if you've got some experiments that you're interested in looking at, one of the things you can do is you can put them into what we call our shopping cart. So, and to, to clear your shopping cart, you have to clear the selections, it stays there, or you clear your cache. But you can select several different experiments, right, and then you can go view those selections. Okay, this is gonna, this is going to open up, uh, it's, it's, it's probably not going to work because of the, the kind of data that it's pulling up, but so it'll, it'll pull up the thumbnails, but what you want to go to is the composite projection viewer. So the composite projection viewer will actually show you a two-dimensional version of the common coordinate framework with the experiments. Uh, and so you can actually take a look at the experiments and the, the experiments are represented by, <coughs> by these circles, right? So you can actually, and when you zoom in, it'll take you, it'll take you up close into those, into that area. It syncs with it. Now it's this URL. If you save that URL and, and if you've got a bunch of experiments, the, the nice thing that you can do is you can hit 3D Atlas, right? And it will open up all those experiments in the Brain Explorer. So, those, so some of you have saved experiments in the Brain Explorer and it was awesome and you closed the Brain Explorer and they were gone forever, right? <laughs> so this is, we're working on this kind of, these kind of issues with the user interfaces, but you know, as, especially as we start to add more features, we're, um, I, I just want to make sure that people, until we have created some kind of a fix, that people have, uh, have a workaround for that. So what you want to save is, is that URL from the, 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 cor the, the, the uh, correlate view, okay?